Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India session we will talk about the group dynamics as we are talking about the effectiveness and the team effectiveness is there. In this group dynamics uh, we will uh, talk about the exactly understanding the what is the group dynamics is there. Uh, in, uh, before this session we will talk about the difference between the group and team right that what is the group and how we can convert into the team uh, in earlier sessions we have discussed that and uh, now with those who people those who are working together in that particular group and what type of the dynamics is there that we will be talking about uh, this group dynamics and uh, there are the eight main principles uh, we will be discussing and these stages of the group development uh, why do people form groups uh, group dynamic theories uh, group properties and seven strategies of the better group decision making, then the case study, research paper, book recommendation and references. So, in the case of, uh, of the group dynamics is there, the, uh, what, uh, what exactly it is the uh, what we understand by the group dynamics. It is refers to the attitudinal and behavioral characteristics of a group um, and the group dynamics concern how groups are formed, what is their structure and which processes are followed in their functioning. Right? So, uh, this is uh, like we give these uh, 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 the assignments uh, and the group activities uh, and when we give the group activities then uh, uh, I leave to the class that is that they can form their own group just the number is fixed that is like the four members will be there or the five members will be there. So, that will be about that uh, particular uh, group uh, that, uh, uh, and they decide about themselves that is uh, how group will be formed right. And so, therefore, uh, uh, here it is the voluntarily formation of group uh, that is becoming the strength. It is concerned with the interactions and forces operating between the groups is there. Right. So, naturally whenever you are creating and giving that the willingness to them uh, to create their uh, select their own team members or group members right. So, it is uh, all the uh, both uh, of whether it is the formal or informal is normally we see that is the in informal groups this type of the practices are followed and uh, therefore, you select the one uh, coordinator volunteer uh, and then uh, then then he creates his informal group and he works on that. But whenever there is a formal group is concerned right. Right. Then uh, it is it it has to be um, based on uh, certain rationality. In order to achieve the best use of the group dynamics, uh, the following principles of the group dynamics have been discussed with the um, with uh, um, uh, by the uh, Darwin called right, and they are as follows. If the group is to be used effectively as a minimum of change, those people who are to be changed and those who are to exert influence of change must have a strong sense of belongingness to the same group is there. So, they, here they are talking about the actually the function of coordination of the manager right. So, therefore, in that case uh, those uh, who are to be changed right. For example, you are um, introducing in a particular technology. So, those who are to be changed, uh, those who are using the technology and those who are bringing the change that is uh, those uh, technical companies, uh, executives, those, uh, those uh, staff which are bringing the change. So, there should be a strong belongingness to them, the same group. The more attractive the group is to its members, the greater is the influence that the group can exert on its member is there. And the and, uh, voluntary people say, yes, I want to be the member of this group then only it is useful. If the person does not want to be the member of that group, but because of the position, um, because of the logic he has been placed there, because of his experience, because, but he does not like that uh, group members right, but uh, because he is the senior most person and therefore, he is to be there, then definitely that will be a, 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 an issue with the uh, group dynamics. Uh, the group will not perform in that case right. So, therefore, uh, that uh, willingness of that particular uh, um, uh, pers uh, person or employee to become the group member that, that is very much required. 
the greater the prestige of the group member in the eyes of the other members, the greater the influence he can exert. And when, when he says, this is a task force member, this is the advisory councils member, uh, he is a member of the board, right. So, therefore, in that case, uh, the, how people will see? People will say, oh, he is, a, he, he is supposed to be the expert of his subject, right. And therefore, in that case, yes, we can also learn from him and in, in, uh, they will be the, they will like to be the member. Efforts to change individual or sub parts of a group, which if successful would have the effect of making them deviate from the norms of the group, will encounter strong resistances there. So, uh, it will be always uh, important uh, that is the whenever we, we are making these uh, individuals uh, as a part of a group or e efforts are made, then definitely that will be having the strong resistance will be there. Information relating to the need for change. Plans for change and the consequences of change must be shared by all relevant people in the group is there, right. So, therefore, they, they, they are required to make the uh, these change, changes are to be made. Whenever we are talking about uh, uh, this, uh, this step of this uh, the group formation, right. So, and we are following this particular group. So, ultimately what we are talking about, we are, we are saying that there will be the requirement, there will be the requirement of the willingness, commitment, expertise. And, and, and we amongst the all the people those who are working uh, there together, if they are having that working togetherness, then definitely in that case they will be able to perform. So, there is a process of five stages through which the forming, storming, norming, performing and adjourning is there. So, first stage is the characterized by a great deal of uncertainty about the group's purpose, structure and leadership is there. So, um, just, just uh, uh, it is the member test the waters to determine what type of behaviors are acceptable. And this stage is complete when members have begun to, uh, um, to think of themselves as a part of a group is there. And therefore, in that case, uh, it becomes uh, very, very important uh, steps because uh, this is a stage where the members have um, begun to think right as a part of the group and therefore, uh, uh, they, they are coming together they are joining together and as soon as they are joining together and uh, that, that is making them uh, to start the work with is there. However, the every person who is coming with uh, uh, this uh, another person and uh, forming in, in the group, right, then it will depend that is the what type of the personalities they are what type of the value systems they are creating, whether the members accept the existence of the group, but resist the constants, right. So, therefore, intra-group conflict starts, the conflict between the group starts. When this stage is complete, uh, uh, so on individuality, because there will be the, uh, everybody is coming for as an individual. So, this every individual uh, who will be control the group, when this stage is uh, complete, uh, there will be a relatively clear hierarchy of leadership within the group is there. And uh, when the storming stage is done, so with the storming ch stage you will find uh, that is the, the somebody will come out as a leader is there. Because in the storming stage there will be the discussion, there will be the conflicts, uh, there will be the convincing. Right, and therefore, in that case, uh, who is the able to overcome that? That he will be leader. So that leader, what does in the third stage, the close relationships develop, and the group demands that cohesiveness. So what was the storming phase was there because there were different personalities. Now the norm starts because they have to work together. Right, it is just like a um, um, marriage. Right, so in the before marriage that is the forming is there, but in the storming uh, uh, there will be after marriage uh, the storming starts, right. But they understand we have to live with each other and then the norms will be uh, derived and the members of that uh, group that know that yes we have to work together and we have to achieve the goal and therefore, uh, that norming st norms are developed and they start working on that. So, that is the performing. So, it is the fourth stage of the group development. The structure at this point is fully functional and accepted. Group energy has moved from getting to know and understand each other to perform the task at hand. So, therefore, in that case here, uh, that understanding between the group members, as we, uh, we uh, talked about the norming phases was there. So, that, that, uh, that becomes uh, uh, the uh, um, better understanding becomes better and they start performing. Adjoining the final stage in group development for temporary groups, 
characterized by the concern with the wrapping up activities rather than the task performance. Some group members are upbeat basking in the group's accomplishments. Others may be depressed over the loss of the camera tyre right and the friendships gained uh, during the work group's life is there. So therefore, ultimately when the performance is done, right, the, the group was performing for a common goal and objectives. And once uh, this common goal and objectives that has been the uh, completed and now it will be the time, time to finish and uh, go away. So that is the adjoining stage is there. So, that was the forming, storming, norming, performing and adjourning. So, perspectives that consider when and why individual consider themselves members of the group, right. So, social identity theory works here, right, that is a set and the proposal is that the people uh, have emotional reactions uh, uh, to the failure or success of their group because their self esteem gets tied into the group's performances there. So, as I mentioned that is the you are the member of the board right are you the member of that uh, uh, task force are you the um, member of quality circle so this is giving the social identity because the who can become the member who is having the subject knowledge who that can only remember. So, therefore, that is given the social identities there. Several characteristics make a social identity important to a person like the similarity is there. So, demographic similarity can also lead to the stronger identification of new hires while those who are demographically different may have a hard time identifying with the group as a whole is there. So, naturally in that case whenever there is a uh, demographic similarity is there especially is the age right. So, then in that case uh, uh, there will be the same same age group members will be there. So, they, they will be liking to work with each other and they will be the uh, they, they, there uh, they can demographically different uh, may have a hard time. So, those who are having the same demographic variables they will be having the good time. However, if there is demographic variable is uh, not same then yes uh, uh, it, it will require a uh, time of understanding. Uh, distinctiveness people are more likely to notice identities that show how they are different from the other groups are there. So, here it, it, it is becoming very important that is uh, how these one member is uh, different from the another member right. So, uh, because by the performance they perform. And when they perform, then uh, it has been observed that is the um, level of uh, difference of their performance. And whenever there will be the level of difference of performance, there will be distinctiveness. So, status because people use identities to define themselves and increase self esteem, it makes sense that they are most interested in linking themselves to the high status group is there. So, <laughs> therefore, it should be the similarity and at the same time um, they, they require um, that is uh, they are part of that particular uh, status status is there. So, uncertainty reduction membership in a group also helps some people understand who they are and how they fit into the world. So, therefore, uncertainty reduction will be there. So, uh, because because what happens that is the you, you, you get the guidance, you get the support right. So, the, your results are predictable. So, there will be uncertainty will be minimum. Uh, uh, the group dynamics theories uh, now we will uh, discuss and the uh, propinquity theory. The most basic theory explaining affiliation is uh, propinquity. Uh, individuals affiliate with one another because of the special or geographical proximity. In an organization employees who work in the same area of the plan or office or managers with office close to one another would more probably form into groups than would those who are not physically located together. So, the, the, this is uh, uh, the uh, very natural uh, parameter. So, those uh, who are living uh, are working together uh, uh, then they will have the uh, more, uh, more uh, uh, the proximity to each other. So, because of that uh, geographical locations the exchange theory this theory is based on the reward cost outcomes of interactions to be attracted towards a group a person thinks in terms of what he will get in exchange of interaction with group members a minimum positive level towards uh, rewards greater than cost 
of an outcome must exist in order for attraction or affiliation to take place. So, therefore, in that case uh, the group, group uh, dynamics uh, is depending upon what I give and what I gain and therefore, if uh, the gain may be monetary, may be non-monetary, right. But if there is an attractive game is there, then definitely they will like to connect with that particular group uh, because that exchange uh, that is motivating them. Third is the balance theory. This theory is, is proposed by the uh, Theodore Newcomb states that persons are attracted to one another on the basis of similar attitudes uh, towards the commonly relevant objects and goals are there. So, the, the, this is also very, very um, uh, interesting part that is the they, they, they are having that is the similar attitudes are there towards each other. So, the, the feathers of the same bird uh, flock together. So, once a relationship is formed, it strives to maintain a symmetrical balance between the attraction and the common attitudes is there. So, therefore, in that case like here it is shown individual C, individual attitude to, towards the authority, work, lifestyle, politics and religions, right. So, therefore, in that case uh, this A, B, C, right, they, they are having uh, that symmetrical balance for the attraction and the common attitudes are there. If an imbalance occurs, attempts are made to restore the balance. If the balance cannot be restored, the relationship dissolves. And therefore, in that case many groups they are getting the adjunct because they, they are not able to continue and not able to perform. So, um, after the performance definitely there is a natural adjunct is there, but whenever we are talking about that adjunct in between that is that is causing to the lo lo loss to the organization and therefore, in that case uh, this balance, balance is required to be created. However, uh, th that is the similarity will be there in among that particular group members, it will be better. Uh, the Homans theory according to the George C. Homans, the more activities persons share, the more numerous will be their in interactions are there, right. And uh, therefore, in that case uh, activities, interactions and, and the sentiments are there. Now, then the stronger will be their shared activities and sentiments. And the more sentiments uh, people have for one another, the more will be their shared activities and the interactions are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, it will be the always uh, uh, between the group members, so, the whatever the activities are there and those activities uh, will be shared by the interactions, right. And the more uh, and it is not only that is the uh, that is the formal activities are shared. So, when you are talking about the group dynamics, the sentiments are along with that particular person or the group members are there. So, it is the activities, interactions and sentiments, all three are important for the effective group dynamics are there. So, if you are having the consideration for the sentiments, then, then, uh, then definitely they will be having the uh, mo more interactions and the activities are there. So, if a better activities and interaction is there, uh, so they will be making the more strong bindings of the sentiments are there. Now, here we have to also understand uh, that is the uh, the interactions right and the activities right and that is has to be performed by the group members and whenever they are performing this type of the uh, uh, activities and the uh, directions are there and that that has to be supplement to each other. The group uh, property the roles uh, then the set of expected behavior patterns attributed to someone occupying a given position in a social unit and therefore, it, uh, it, it becomes very important that is uh, what is expected. So, first is the role perception. An individual's view of how he or she is supposed to act in a given situation. So, that will be the role perception will be there. So, here uh, that whatever these uh, uh, the perceptions of, uh, in a given situation and then definitely that will that, that will be creating uh, that how he she is supposed to act in a given situation. So, uh, role expectations are there, how does uh, how others believe a person should uh, act in a given situation. So, role perception is the it is the individual's own perception. But when we are talking about the role expectations, so these are the expectation a person should act in a given situation. And the role conflict is a situation in which an individual is confronted by divergent role expectations are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, it, it becomes very, very important that is whatever the role conflict is there. So, then individuals uh, uh, any confront, confrontation is there and the, those role conflicts are there, they are required to be resolved. So, um, in, in the case of the role perception, 
uh, and the in the case of the role expectations right and both both are required to match uh, then definitely the ex role expectancy will be high norms are acceptable standards of behavior now the second is norms the, so, after discussing with the roles, now we will talk about the norms. So, norms are acceptable standards of behavior within a group that are shared by the group's member. So, that is the expected. So, many times uh, the group members they talk like that. This is the minimum expected from you that you will do like this. So, given below is the different classes of group, uh, group norms, the performance norms. The group will determine what is acceptable level of effort, product and outcome should exist in the workplaces there and therefore, those performance norms are to be followed. And in this case, then these per per performance norms that will be decided um, by, uh, by the, uh, the uh, group. Uh, appearance norms, the group will determine how members should dress, when they should be, be uh, busily working and they, they can take a break and what kind of the loyalty is shown to the leader and company. So, therefore, uh, here uh, that is the how they should dress even. So, they, they should be also has been reflected um, in under the norms. Social arrangement norms are there, the group regulates the interaction between its members. So, therefore, the performance norms, what is the group determines and acceptable, what is the appearance norms is there, that is what should be the dress, when business working hours, right and what, then, then the social arrangement norms are there and therefore, that is the uh, how they, they are interacting with each other. Uh, and then the norms for the allocation of resources, uh, that is the group or the organization uh, um, that uh, originates the standards by which pay, new equipment and even uh, difficult tasks are assigned and that is the allocation of resource norms will be there. The conformity is the adjustment of one's behavior or the align with the norms of the group is there. So, uh, so because that group is known for a particular norms, so there is, there is a requirement of the conformity is there and when there is a conformity, it means that that is all members of the group or the behavior of that group member is aligned with the norms of the group is there and uh, when uh, as soon as uh, uh, these uh, norms are followed, then definitely in that case, uh, uh, the, the chances of the deviant behavior at the workplace is less. What is the deviant be workplace behavior? It is a voluntarily behavior that violates uh, significant organizational norms. So, if you are following those particular uh, norms, then there will be, uh, 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 there is no question of the different behavior, but here it is a voluntarily different behavior is there. So, wh why it does so, threatens the well-being of the organization or its members, also called anti-social behavior. So, uh, in, uh, in, in, in this case, uh, it, it is the, many times it has been seen that there is a deviant workplace behavior is there. Now, the, after the roles, norms, we will talk about the status. So, status is a socially defined position or rank given to the groups or group members, right. As I mentioned, that is whenever the people, uh, for a very simple example is uh, uh, of the club. So, if you become the member of any particular club, so then, then uh, you, uh, the, the status of that person in the society, it goes uh, high. So, there is a status characteristics theory states that differences in status characteristics create status hierarchies within the groups is there. So, if the somebody says, I am, I am the member of the uh, uh, five star club, I am the member of the two star club. Right. So, definitely uh, in the group itself, uh, those who are uh, who are the members of the five star clubs and those who are the member of the two star clubs, there will be the difference and the two star club members, uh, they will treat the five star club member differently, right. So, group uh, proper, uh, next is the size. The size of the group is an uh, essential component uh, while understanding group dynamics, right. So, individuals perform better in smaller groups. If you remember correctly, I have mentioned that is uh, uh, in the earlier sessions that is uh, what should be the size of the group and size of the groups uh, it was suggested by 15 to 20 members uh, and uh, as I mentioned that is if we talk about the management effective management is there. So, that is the uh, 4, 5, uh, 5 to 7 then that should be the size of the group is there well, but again it will depend upon the task also. And the, and then the cohesiveness is there. The cohesion or interactions of the group members shows the level of bonding they share. Here is some of the elements of the group cohesiveness. So, that is a task relation is there. So, uh, in the case refers to the interaction of the individual in a group for the accomplishment of the assigned work. Right, whether he is able to um, uh, have the completion of that work or not. Uh, and the social relations is there, there is the interaction of the group members on a personal 
level social interactions. The emotions can be seen as the feeling shared by the group members are there. So, these are the elements of the group cohesiveness is there. So, that is the what is the task relation, social relations and the emotions are there. So, uh, in the case uh, whenever we are having uh, this is a cohesiveness, cohesiveness is low and performance norms are also low. So, moderate to low productivity will be seen, right. But when we are having the cohesiveness is high and performance, performance norms are low, then there will be low productivity. And whenever the cohesiveness is high and, and the performance norms are also high, then there will be the high productivity will be there. And then when, whenever there will be the low cohesiveness and the uh, high performance norms will be there, that will be the moderate productivity will be there. So, ultimately uh, uh, what is the important? So, that the important is that uh, uh, we, are, we, we are looking for the high productivity, any group. Right? And that high productivity uh, in that cohesiveness, cohesiveness plays a very, very important role. And if the, there is a high cohesiveness, cohesiveness is there and the high performance norms are there, then definitely high productivity will, will be there. Now, the seven strategies for the better group decision making is uh, on hierarchy and in, uh, an instinct to prevent dissent and a desire to preserve harmony, many groups fall into group think and the group shift is there. So, group think is a phenomenon in which the norms for the consensus overrides the realistic appraisal of alternative courses of action is there. So, here it, it is always that is uh, how the group is uh, thinking and, they, uh, and, and on the basis of those norms. And if the group thinking is uh, always there, that is the how what members have uh, communicated, uh, and then then definitely um, th that will be having the high level of thinking. Uh, group shift is a change between a group's decision and individual decision that a member within the group would make. The shift can be towards either conservatism or greater risk but it generally is towards a more extreme version of the group's original position is there. And therefore, in that case it is the, uh, the, the, the group shift may be also possible, right. So, um, a group's decision and an individual's decision, right, if, if there is a change, right. So, an, uh, either uh, that a greater risk is there that is to act on this particular norms or towards a more extreme version of the group's uh, original position is there because there is a difference. Here is the seven simple strategies for more effective group decision making is there, mm, keep the group small when you need to make an important decision, choose a heterogeneous group over a homogeneous one, uh, appoint a strategic dissenter or a one two, collect opinions independently, mm, mm, provide a safe space to speak up, uh, do not over rely on experts and share collective responsibility is there. And therefore, we see that is on the basis of this that is when uh, we are combining, we, we are combining here uh, about the competency with the convenience that is the whatever the competency is there right of the group members and that has been aligned, that has been aligned with the emotions of the group members is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, and that is becoming the collective responsibility and if there is a collective responsibility is there, uh, then definitely in that case you will find that is the, it, it, it is becoming the more, more useful for the performance of the group and group has becoming more effective is there. So, but for this purpose the very interesting point has been mentioned that is the they do not over rely on the experts. Now, you see every group has to take the decision according to its situation that in the under what situation that group has been formed and under what situation the group is working. So, many times what happens the experts, experts give their opinion which may not be having the debt relevancy um, uh, with that particular situation and there, there that internal group leader that has to decide. Now, in these uh, 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 particular group formations and group strategies, uh, uh, we understand and that is uh, there is there what is required is the uh, that uh, uh, the norms are required, uh, performance norms has to be there right and there has to be the cohesiveness and whenever uh, these norms and cohesiveness uh, uh, that, uh, that is matching then definitely the groups will be having the uh, high performance or high productivity. Uh, as usual, this is the case study uh, which we will be talking about uh, uh, the herd behavior in the housing bubbles, right. And uh, uh, this will suggest uh, the size of the group, uh, what should be the size of the group. As in seven strategies in the previous slide we have seen, the size of the group is to be small. How is this compared to the problems resulting from the herd behavior? 
uh, so this will case study and this is the research paper empowering leadership work group cohesiveness individual learning orientation and individual innovative behavior in the public sector that is the empirical evidence from the Norway is there. So, this is about the uh, research paper and this is about the book recommendation and that is a team intervention, group dynamics and the team interventions that will work. So, uh, these are the references um, for, for these studies and the for your future uh, uh, understanding in details, right. So, this is all about uh, the developing that uh, uh, group dynamics and the um, maximizing the performance of the group productivity. Thank you.